Hey future doctors, welcome back to Viserverse. Today we're diving into lichen planus, a common but distinctive condition that every clinician should be able to recognize. Lichen planus is an inflammatory disorder involving both the skin and mucosa. By the end of this session, you'll be confident in spotting and understanding lichen planus, and these are our main takeaways. The five Bs that characterize classic lichen planus, identify the key associations and triggers, including hepatitis C virus, recognize pathognomonic signs. Wickham's striae is one of the most important signs that whenever you see, you're gonna see, you're gonna say that we have lichen planus. Describe the clinical presentation at different sites, skin, oral, and nails. Outline the basic principles of management. Lichen planus is a common itchy inflammatory condition affecting the skin, the mucosa, hair, and nails. The diagnostic five Ps that you want to keep in mind are purple, polygonal, pruretic, papules, and these papules sometimes even coalesce or grow bigger and form plaques. Peripheral, meaning that they are found in the wrists and ankles. This is how typically a patient presents. Again, you can see the papules here, and a papule is less than one centimeter. A plaque is bigger than one centimeter, and in this case, you see it on the patient's wrist, which is very typical. These are very itchy as well, and as you can see, they are polygonal. Who gets lichen planus, and why do they develop it? Lichen planus typically affects patients between the ages of 30 and 60. These are more common in women with a 2 to 1 ratio. The key associations with lichen planus involve hepatitis C virus, strongly associated with oral lichen planus. You want to always screen for HCV whenever you see oral lichen planus. Drugs, lichenoid reaction, important drugs include beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and antimalarials. Contact allergens, including dental amalgams and even some metals. Wickham striae. These are fine, white, lacy lines on the surface of papules or plaques. Whenever they're big like this, we call it a plaque. And these are pathognomonic. So Wickham striae is pathognomonic. So whenever we see it, the diagnosis is essentially made. We also have something called Kobner phenomenon. This is whenever you hear have for instance, any sort of minor trauma, let's say a cut, then a new papule or plaque will form, and that is called Kobner phenomenon. It is not only found in lichen planus, it could be found in many other diseases, like we're going to discuss later on in this playlist, including vitiligo, for instance, or sometimes atopic dermatitis. Post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. These will leave dark marks after resolution. Just like we've discussed at the beginning of our lecture, lichen planus affects not only the skin, but also the mucosa. Here we're going to discuss oral lichen planus. It has two forms, the reticular and the erosive form. The reticular form, as shown on this picture here, it is asymptomatic. They're white lace-like pattern, as you can see here, and typically presents on the buccal mucosa. The erosive form is more serious, and it's not enough that it's painful, but also there is a malignant potential here. That's why whenever we see such patients, we want to require a follow-up. Another form of lichen planus is nail lichen planus, forming around 10% of all cases. This manifests itself as longitudinal ridging and sometimes even thinning, of the nails as you can see here. A more serious case or manifestation of nail lichen planus is pterygium. The nail folds here are going to fuse to the nail bed and causing permanent scarred nail loss. Once you see this sign, this is an indication of a severe scarring disease. Lichen planus also can involve other areas of the body, including the scalp, again leading to scarring alopecia, and even the genitals because we said that it also affects the mucosa. Just like any other dermatologic disease, 
Differential diagnosis is important in the case of lichen planus because many other diseases can mimic this disease. Cutaneous lichen planus, for instance, we want to make differential diagnosis from lichenoid drug eruption. As we've discussed by the beginning of this lecture, one of the examples is ACE inhibitors or beta blockers. Psoriasis, one of the most important diseases that mimics lichen planus very closely, secondary cephalus as well. For oral lichen planus, their reticular form, I want to differentiate that from leukoplakia, candidiasis, and lupus. And for oral lichen planus, that is the erosive form, I want to differentiate that from pemphigus vulgaris. We're going to talk about this later on in this playlist. And from erythema multiforme, these are the most important differential diagnoses that you need to keep in mind. So if I ask you now, what is this lesion and what is this lesion? You may attempt to say that both are lichen planus, but unfortunately, this is not the case. As we've discussed, differential diagnosis is very crucial in this case. This, for instance, is black psoriasis. And psoriasis is very important in terms of scaling. So what we're seeing here is not actually Wickham striae. These are scales. On the other hand, here we see lichen planus, and that typically here you can see it on the rest of the patient. And these white lines, the thin lines, are actually Wickham striae. Treatment is tailored to the site and severity. The goal is to control inflammation and relieve symptoms, particularly itching. First line treatment of lichen planus for the skin, for instance, includes potent topical corticosteroids and antihistamines for itching. For the mouth, when it, we want to give topical corticosteroids and topical calcineurin inhibitors such as dacrolimus, especially for intertragenous areas. Severe widespread lichen planus, here we want to give, we want to give systemic corticosteroids in such a situation. Refractory, if it is refractory, then we're going to go with phototherapy, that is narrowband UVB, systemic agents such as methotrexate to inhibit the immune response. The key takeaways for clinical practice. Whenever you see a patient with a purple, pruritic, plaques, or papules that are peripheral on the rest or ankles, we want to think of lichen planus. We want to always look for Wickham striae to confirm because these are pathognomonic, meaning that whenever you see them, you diagnose with lichen planus. For oral LP, what are we going to do? Definitely check for HCV infections. Erosive OP, are we going to send the patient? Not without scheduling a follow-up. Nail pterygium, these, this is a sign of irreversible damage. That wraps up our breakdown of lichen planus. I hope this clarified the key clinical points for you. Remember that you can download the full summary notes from our website, just visit visreverse.org. If this was helpful, please subscribe and hit the like button. It truly supports our channel. Let me know in the comments below what topic you'd like to see next.